This is spicy. Double ward wielder with an Eileen's favor. I'm gonna keep that. So we're just gonna jam Guru Banner into Ward Wielder and then Eileen's favor and hopefully kinda go off. We'll see what happens though. Chrome Watch Paladin's not a bad two drop either. Possible that I wanna wait on this. Play the Crown Watch Paladin first. I think that, I mean, Ward Wielder is the, the goal though. This is the Let jam. Let's just go for it. Let's play our hand early, let them know what's up. And Valkyrie Enforcer. I'm like, this is going to be an Enforcer, isn't it? Okay, yeah, that, that does get us. Um, I'm going to play another Ward Wielder. I could play Eileen's Favor, but I want to wait and have the 5-5 five five with Haste, essentially. Little bit greedy, because it's possible that I, you know, Eileen's Favor, get a... Uh, sigil, play it, and then next turn I draw a sigil and I can play Wood Wielder and say Crown Watch Paladin. But Tell it's not 100%. What do you see? This way, I know I'm doing it. Winds protect me. And we're gonna swing in here. I don't want to defend too much. It's fairly likely they have something like Vanquish. Uh, and we're racing okay for now. We have a lot of lifesteal if we get there. Hmm. A vanquish, huh? Not quite good enough. We really need more power is what we need. Let's play Silverwing and pass. I might double block Kothan if they attack on the ground with it. They're probably going to alt it, though. Yep, there we go. Yikes. Hmm. So, this is some bad news. Oof, I could really have used uh, a little bit more power in this game. Just a bit. We still have a chump blocker. I'm not sure how we recover after that, though. Oh, yeah. Hmm. It seems bad for me when my opponent's landing Eileen's, and I have not gotten the power to land uh, <laughs> Inquisitor's Blade yet. So, we're just gonna have to scoop this one, unfortunately. Just took a long time to actually hit the power that we needed. That happens. Alright, game two, we have a Dark Veil Agent right away. I'm gonna keep this. We're gonna hope that we can get the Dark Veil Agent to have Aegis itself, and then we can suit it up with a Hammer of Might. That'll be our goal here instead. Ooh. These draws are really awkward. You do not want to have three Hammer of Mites with no protected creatures. That's exceptionally bad. Just as an aside. Really not what you want to do. Uh, torch? Yeah. There we go. And that's why. Because now we're stuck with nothing. The third hammer is just an insanely bad draw. My opponent is, I assume, passing the turn since they literally cannot play anything else. Cool. Well, I mean, we have to go for it. I'm just going to try and Dark Veil again. Pretty likely that they are able to remove it, remove it again, but I don't have much of a choice. Sure. Oof. Winds protect me. All right, pass the turn. At some point, we'll hit an Aegis creature. We have sixteen in the deck. Yeah, we have sixteen. I think that we could hit some at some point. Let us begin. And we have a five-five. They do have to have some pretty specific removal to get rid of that. Something like, um, okay. Vanquish will do it. I was going to say something like an Auric Rune Hammer doesn't get there. And we're stuck passing. Stop giving me hammer time. Because I really don't need any more. 
So 16 units. Yeah, good 25% every turn we've got a chance to hit one. It's more than 25% chance, actually, every turn. There we go. Let your spirit rise. We do have units that matter. This is an awful situation, though. I mean, they managed to also have multiple Wisdom of Elders. So they've just got a ton of gas right now. Torch. Hopefully they don't kill it. That's an Akari, though. I know my Akarias, and that's an Akaria. I can hope that it was a Starsteel die show. Because if it's Starsteel Die Show, then it doesn't get rid of uh, the Shelter Wing Rider without trading. Oh no, they just have Arcaria naturally. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I can Shelter Wing and Crown Watch. And just pass. Arcaria number two. Yep, there we go. Rise up or be cut oh, down. wow. Uh, yeah, this uh, this went pretty south. No, oh, we have the units that we need now. A little late, but we have them now. Keep that as def defensive shelter wing hammer. I guess that's the thing to do. Be very surprised if it lives. But I don't have many other options. Six cards in hand seems real bad. Alright, something has like 25 Warcry triggers on it. And Star Steel Die Show. Sick. Well, there's Eileen's choice. That would have been very good earlier. I'm going to attack with both. Look, we're basically dead anyways. And then I'll wait, hold up Eileen's choice. I can choice the Akaria and then vanquish it. There's no way we win this, right? What do they have in their hand? They haven't been playing power every turn, so I'd be surprised if that was it. But this seems like a turn where they can just slam. You don't want to make my allies your enemies. Ha! I'm at five. Harsh rule. Really? Oh, wow. I wish we'd gotten the punish. We have a lot of weapons and stuff. Okay. Eileen's choice kind of makes sense. I'm surprised by the harsh rule. There we go! <laughs> 25 triggers, as stated. Nice. Awkward games. We'll, we'll break over it. Do, 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 do. And another hand that just is not looking great. Ooh. 
Speaking of not looking great, hands have been awkward and the draws have been better now. Defend the throne. Now all I need is one more power. I forgot to say hello to this wonderful person. Under the cover of darkness. Oh man, this actually looks like the way I want things to go. Could this be the hand? This is kind of looking like the hand. You can get Aegis on everything. And I'm just gonna hammer this. Leave the 2-2 back, get a big trigger down, and then we can Shelter Wing Rider next turn. They don't exactly have great attacks in. Hmm, actually. We'll attack with both, and then we'll Yotun Feast Caller, probably. Because it looks like we can Inquisitor's Blade and just go off. If we can get Feast Caller going in for free, that's gonna be pretty good. Oh yeah, oh, this game's over. They can chump block all day. Like, I don't even care about putting the Inquisitor's Blade on it now. If it's not dying, I don't care. Let your spirit rise. All Aegis. Nice to have all these Aegis units this game. That would have been so it would have been so good to have an early one last one. With those four hammers uh, three hammers, sorry. They would have been really, really good. Alright. They're gonna try very hard to chump block this long enough. Don't think it's gonna work. I never stop. We're just gonna make them chump forever. There's only so long they can do that. Even with Vault of the Praxis. At least while we're gaining, like, huge advantage off of things like the Jotun Feast Caller still. Me. I don't really want to give them another card. All right. They're really trying. Granite and drone? Nope, no granite and drone. Mm, yeah. I want to make everything a threat. Torch, make that smaller. That makes a lot of sense. But we can Dark Veil Agent. Under the cover of darkness. Winds Try and get Aegis back onto the Shelter Wing Rider. Does give them an extra card, but at this point, I think it's okay. One of the problems with Praxis is that it doesn't really get removal. Not for things like this. It doesn't get hard removal. Purify is probably the closest, but that doesn't really answer it, answer it. It just stops it from doing things. For Sheltering Rider, I guess that it would, because it would be stuck as a 1-6. I'm kind of surprised that our opponent went for the Flyer and not for the Deadly. But, I'm not sure that it really matters. They're really trying to put up a defense here.
trust in your skills. Let your spirit rise. <sighs> All right. They have to answer one, two, three, four, five, six Aegis creatures. Oh, they're in Idol of Distrandek? That's awesome. Uh, I I want to congratulate them because that's pretty sweet. Idol of Distrand is awesome. It's too bad that they uh, ran into a really good hand from us because that was a sweet deck. But uh, we've got our win. Let's keep going. Ooh, this hand is dicey, but it's not bad, bad. It's just, it feels super medium. I don't think that we throw it away because we can easily get a hand that's much worse. We can play everything in it. It has some uh, decent cards. I don't love the Dark Veil Agent that much though. It's fine, but it's not something that I'm looking for multiples of for sure. And I almost think that Dark Veil Agent is better a little bit later. Like I was saying, kind of giving that really awkward presentation of, say, Dark Veil Agent and a threat where you let the Dark Veil Agent live and it might protect other things. Under the cover of darkness. Dark Veil Agent on turn two, just giving itself Aegis, is okay, but not super important. Not going to do enough on its own. Hmm. Trust in your skills. All right, we're going to unseen commando. I don't want to attack in with our Aegis Dark Veil vale agent. Because now that's a way for us to set up that presentation I was talking about, where... Find solace in the darkness. We're going to be able to get Aegis onto everything. Under the cover of I do need some non-power cards, though, that's for sure. We can double block the Magus? Something like a hammer, a uh, shelter wing. Those would be really good. This seems like it's probably a terrible matchup for us, though, because Dawn Walker, to me, suggests that they have uh, Xenon Initiation, and that gets around Aegis really well. Hmm. They'll double block. Trading a 3-4 for a 2-2 right now seems pretty good. Ooh, wow. Huh. Let us be I and mean, I don't want to blame everything on our draws, but we've had multiple games where we just didn't have the power, and then we had way too many hammers and no units, and now we have way too much power. So, like, eh, this is, this is some awkward draws, I think. I do think this deck actually has some legs, because it was... I was playing it earlier and I was doing okay. But, I mean... I can't do a whole lot if this is what it's going to give me. Yeah. Well, uh, awkward. I'm playing 26 power and then the Eileen's favors. So I... I don't think we should run into this situation too often where we have 10, well, 11 power sources by turn six, but you know, that's the thing that'll happen. We've got to just get over it. Win out for the finals. Hmm. And this is a hand that has way too little power. So let's redraw that. And oh, it does not get better. This is. Almost the exact same hand. If I do draw Primal, then I have Eileen's Favor, and that gets us close to Yotin Feast Callers, so we're kind of okay. Thank goodness. Uh, we're going to Ward Wielder so first. So then we can Eileen's Favor and have the 5-5 five five start smacking face. It's written right here. Yes. Okay, perfect. 
very excited that they didn't have the torch for this because now they can't have the torch for it. They can torch us in the face to make it a 2-2, but then they're still stuck dealing with the 5-5. Five five. And we get to make it a flyer next turn. Seems pretty good. What have Reliquary Raider? That card's kind of scary. Not a huge fan of them getting Reliquary Raider, because that's extra card draw every turn. But I th think we're just down to race now. If they have a Purify, it does kill this. Just as an aside, this dies to Purify current currently, because it'll remove the text. Okay. Haha. <laughs> uh, that was kind of lucky. Just a little bit. But it removes the bonus uh, plus three plus three, and then it becomes a five three and it just dies to purify. Well, does our opponent have it? Good news, even if they do, I have a Yotin Feast Caller afterwards. Yes! Yes, we did it. All right, sweet. I was very happy that that got at the end. Whew. I think that we had a decent chance, even if they managed to kill it or put, like, say, Sandstorm Titan down, which was one of the big things that I was worried about. Because then we could Jotun Feast Caller. Um, or, I mean, Sandstorm Titan, we have a pretty great answer for. We just vanquish it. But if they even kill the agent or make it smaller again by popping uh, Aegis on face, have some kind of way of defending themselves like that, Jotun Feast Caller and then the blade onto the Jotun Feast Caller is a really sick follow-up. And that's going to be hard for them to answer again. So, managed to go 2-3 and three despite the awkward draws. I think that this deck actually has some legs. Uh, like I said, I was playing it earlier and had some success. I went about like 3 or 4 in a row before I started streaming today. Or, well, not streaming. Recording for YouTube. But, yeah, so I think this deck's pretty fun. As I was saying beforehand, I do think that there is some flexibility between Eileen's Choice and Finest Hour, Vanquish, Duelist Blade kind of choices, because you need to find kind of what you're facing in the meta, what the answers that you need are. Uh, if you're facing a lot more aggressive cards that you're not able to beat that are dodging under your Vanquishes, you might want to put in things like Lightning Strike. A uh, good example of what I'm talking about would be like Haru Pacifier, because Pacifier stops you from playing Inquisitor's Blades, Hammers, uh, Duelist Blade. So it's a tough card for you to deal with because it's got 3-4 stats, you can't Vanquish it, you can't Eileen's Choice it, uh, you can't Duelist Blade it because you can't play weapons unless you already have the Duelist Blade down. So it, that card would be a big problem. If you've seen lots of that, you might want Lightning Strike. Uh, if you're seeing, you know, other Unseen Commandos maybe, stuff like that. Uh, it's maybe not a bad idea to have a, a strike instead of some of these choices. So something that might be a little bit of an option for you. In any case, I do appreciate everybody stopping by. It was wonderful to have you today. And as always, you can check out all my stuff on Patreon.com. And please check out my wonderful sponsor, Ink Gaming. Uh, there's a link down below. I have a store set up through Ink Gaming. I'm going to be putting up a lot more photography stuff so that you can have some really cool looking... Uh, like landscape playmats and stuff like that. And I also do have some channel art already, things like our Elder Dragon Hoedown art, uh, up for mouse pads and for playmats. There's all kinds of cool gaming gear that you can get on inkgaming.com. And remember to use the promo code ILLION12, so even if you're not ordering from my store, you get 12% off your order. Uh, just check them out. They've got really, really cool gear, even if you don't buy anything. And in case, I do appreciate everyone stopping by, and I will see you next week.